Last Saturday, I published a walkthrough video on a Ferretti Custom Line Navetta 30, and the walkthrough was made with Matty Zadnikar. Now, that's because the yacht in question is a part of the CNET fleet, and Matty is the founder of CNET. You may be familiar with the fact that they offer co-ownership solutions for yachts so that you don't have the expense of buying an entire yacht and running an entire yacht, but rather you share that cost with other owners. I have always been fascinated by the success of CNET, not just from the point of view of the concept of co-ownership, which is very impressive, but also as to how a, an experienced businessman grows his business. So pretty much every time that I film with CNET, I ask Matty if I can interview him and interview some of the staff on his team as well. So if you're interested in entrepreneurship, if you're interested in co-ownership of yachts, if you're interested in how to build a business from an experienced and successful businessman, this video is for you. Yesterday we filmed a walkthrough video showing you all the way around this beautiful Navetta 30 with Matty Zadnikar, the founder of CNET. Usually, Matty calls me round about August time to film another yacht that's joined the fleet. But this time, he surprised me by calling me much earlier in the year because the company's growing so quickly. But also, Matty, it's not a Bonetti. It's a Ferretti custom line. Do Bonetti know about this? Uh, let me say, I, I don't have an obligation to inform them about what they're doing, <laughs> and I'm still in a very good and close relationship with them. But you know that we launched a year ago, together with you, we launched the matchmaking concept. Oh yes, yeah? matchmaking. And matchmaking means, so in the past, all the boats were bought by me. So I did the, I was the initial investor, and I bought all the Benettis that we have, with the exception of the Oasis 40 meter because that was our first matchmaking project. And matchmaking means that there is an existing owner who has signed up a contract with a build slot, with a boat in construction. And, uh, and instead of going putting it up for charter, uh, now more and more people also found a way to go ownership. And they approached us, and it was the same with this boat. This owner approached us last year in September, September, October. He said, I will have in January a new delivery of a boat. Would you be interested to sell up to 50% shares in the boat? And we came to an agreement uh, and to then afterwards manage the entire co-ownership scheme because selling is only the, a small part. It's the, the main thing that makes the difference is the management of it. And that's the reason that we are now on a custom line. So it could have been San Lorenzo? It Sunseek, could have been San Lorenzo. Be... Let me say, as long as it is a brand that, that quality-wise, quality I can align with. So for, I don't want to identify myself with every product. So the product needs to be a product. When I go to co-owners in the market, it should be a product that, uh, that I can stand behind. And I must say, Custom Line, the Ferretti Group, you know it. You have worked yourself with them. It's a qualified company with qualified products. And definitely this yard is a qualified product. And, and it feels like the company's not just growing in the number of yachts on the fleet, but also the speed with which you're growing. Is that, is that true to say? Yeah, uh, it's correct. When I look from the past, uh, we, last summer we have had uh, our last discussion and it always became a routine every year in the summertime. So now we speed up the process. Normally it takes us uh, one and a half to, in the beginning it took us one and a half to two years to get the yacht from zero shares sold to 100% of the shares sold. What we saw in the past years, mainly COVID was a very important driver for us. It became one year, but now I must say with the matchmaking, it becomes even each half year that we uh, get new boats in the fleet and then we get shares sold. So the process becomes faster. That also uh, that defines the need to professionalize organization in a, in a higher speed. So there's also that we are in the, in the process of a lot of changes within the company. Yeah. and and. We'll come on to that perhaps in a moment because there's some interesting changes uh, and, and significant changes happening. But quite aside from this yacht, which is beautiful and we showed yesterday, I think you have another really exciting project. Yeah. Uh, I could not speak about it last year because uh, it was still too early in the process. We are still in the engineering phase, but the demand in the market is growing. So that means that there were well, a 95 footer that was the first three of our boats in the fleet were Benetti Delfinos, 95. Uh, so then we went up to the 35, the Azimut Grande, uh, 35 meter, the Benetti Mediterraneo, 35 meter. Then we went up to the 40 meter, the Benetti Oasis. Uh, uh, but the, the requests that we get are becoming bigger. 
So that means that we are more and more requesting going in the direction of 45, 50 meters. And we now even have the first request for over 500 gross tonnage, what is a completely different leak. Yes. So based on that, that demand in the market, and together with a, with a Belgian investor, uh, we decided last year to sign a contract. To sign a contract will also be a matchmaking model, a contract with Rossi Navi. A uh, very uh, uh, known yes, shipyard, great shipyard. Uh, for one of for one of uh, uh, builds, so of a, a build from a white paper. So we defined a very beautiful yacht uh, in cooperation uh, with Alberto Mancini as the exterior designer and uh, with Achille Salvani as the interior designer. There we really used uh, really names and authorities in the market to define a new project. And that project will become definitely a co-ownership project, yeah, a co-ownership project. And we have a launch of the boat in the Q2. So this, uh, let me say, in the period April to June of 2026. And what size? That's a 53 this? meter, 499 GT. So we're really trying to get the maximum out of the boat, what is typically, um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a very nice boat. Yeah. Yeah. How are you managing the construction of that? Because you already have a, a big existing fleet, you already have a yeah. lot of clients, and a new build project is a big yeah. commitment. This is a big commitment. It's also a very dedicated experience. So um, I, I already have myself a lot of experience from an owner perspective, but in the meantime also from a technical perspective, but I divided the roles. Uh, and I got a very strong uh, company on board, a very strong partner that I know out of the past, Nikola, Nikolai. Oh, yeah. So he is supporting me from, let me say, the project management side. I'm taking care of the owner representation, the representation side, and we together, we really form a very strong team. And I, I, I closed with him a strategic alliance so that means uh, in the future we in all bigger projects he will become uh, my main partner to do a business with when it comes up to let me see the entire build coordination and follow-up and also of course Jenny's back yeah. back in town yeah Johnny is was was in the past my captain uh, already for more than 10 years ago very experienced guy then uh, started with me uh, the senior experience became the operations manager then uh, he took a sabbatical because we grew very fast and let me see the amount of people and also the headaches connected to managing a lot of people became a little bit too much but he still is a very technical guy and in that sabbatical he um, he also did his uh, his master course to become a certified Lloyd's surveyor so marine severe. So uh, and now we found back to each other. So he's joining the company again, and he will uh, he will be re in support of all new projects. So from a technical point, he works very closely together with Tomislav, our operations manager, because he is still the head of operations in the organization. But he brings then the skill of survey of the technical part and the preparation, and he will also be involved in that project. You know, every time I meet you, every time I listen to you, and, and you exude this amazing energy. Uh, when you're talking about CNET, when you're talking about other businesses that you've had, are you not worried that um, you could burn out? How, how are you going to avoid being... I'll tell you why I ask. I remember years ago, funnily enough, with Ferretti, when I worked at Ferretti from 95 through to, I think, 2006, and Norberto Ferretti told me that um, at one time, everybody who bought a yacht had to meet him. They all wanted to meet him. Um, but of course, that's not sustainable. You, you must be in a similar situation where everybody who wants to do business with you wants to do business with Matty Zabnikar. Yeah, let me say that's correct, but it has been my business footprint of the past. So when I look to from the industrial business, I've always been, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm definitely not the manager. So I'm very proud to be an entrepreneur and I appreciate and value a lot good management skills. Yes. Yeah, that don't mean that I can, I'm not able to manage it, but it's not the, the thing that I get very hot from. So it's not my, my main DNA. I'm, I'm more the tactical, the strategical guy who wants to bring new concepts to market, and that gives me a lot of energy. So, and when I look to my industrial business, uh, so every, it took me mainly three to five years when I launched a new concept to then hand it over to a skilled manager because then the entrepreneurial phase was done. Yes, sure. Yeah, because the concept was there, the market was there, there were clients, and then it was simply, uh, and it sounds easy, it's not so easy, but there was more a copy-paste concept, how can we make that what is already there, that install base, how can we professionalize and how can we let it grow? And then what I then did, I stepped to the next market. I started in Belgium in my industrial business, went to the Netherlands, I went to Germany, I went to France, I went to UK. So I was always the one who was the first, started up and then handed over to a capable manager. When I now make the comparison to CNET, CNET took me longer 
than I expected. Yeah. So getting the co-ownership idea in the high segment of ultra and high, high network individuals, people with really a lot of money who can easily afford a complete yacht, why sharing? took me more time than I was expecting. So, but now the company has the size. We are going, definitely we will have by the end of the year 10 boats and we will pass the number of almost of 100 employees on the payroll. So now the need of management in the basic business and the main business is becoming very important. And that's the reason uh, that uh, Leon, that you know, who was for already for two and a half years my right hand and the COO, yeah, I will hand over the CEO ship to Leon yeah, and he will further professionalize uh, the organization in, in Europe. And I want to start looking to the Asian market. I want to start looking to the Middle East market. Again, start exploration and see, can we set up business over there? Because I really believe that CNET should become, instead of a European concept, where we also do double season in the States, for example, in the Bahamas, on the Caribbean, but we should become from a European-based company to a global company, having boats all over the world. And that's something that should be my next path. That's the entrepreneurial part again. But that just sounds like more work. For me, it's not work. For me, it's simply um, uh, executing my passion. So I, I like that. Uh, I must say, being in an office, being working on uh, action plans, and being involved in action plan follow-up, that's for me work. Building and creating business together with local clients and stuff like that, for me, it's fun. It's simply fun. So the, for me, it's a difference. So um, that's something that I want to do future-wise. And you also mentioned to me earlier something that surprised me, which was uh, another addition, important addition to the team. Yeah, let me say an important addition to the team. I have to, to make a small nuance when you refer to that. So you have one thing. Leon is running the Synod organization as a CEO, and I want to give him... Uh, Carblage is a big word. We understand each other very well, but he has the lead on a day-to-day -day business. I don't want to disturb that right? because everybody has his style and he has to have the ability to change the organization in a professional way. But when I look from a family um, a portfolio, investment portfolio uh, point of view, uh, CNET is a very important part of the investments that we have as a family, yeah, as a family office. So I have three kids. So I have my succession completely organized in each one third of, of of the of the the world that we as a family build it up. So and my youngest daughter, she will become my successor from a family investment point of view. So she has started in uh, October of last year. Yeah, she is now more and more shadowing me, and um, she she will become in the next three, five, six. I, I don't want to put a, a a number on it, but she will more and more uh, be become the face from a family investment portfolio side. So that's how I cope with succession. Operational-wise, in the business, it's Leon at the day-to-day -day part, but there's much more than only seen it. From a family ownership point of view of shares in multiple company and investment, it will be my youngest daughter. And, and there is a close cooperation between me, Leon, and my youngest daughter because they have to work together. So let me ask you a, a, a quite a direct question on that, and, and the question really more to satisfy the cynics that watch, that okay. watch the video. Because from a family perspective, I think everybody understands why you would want your daughter involved. But from a business point of view, what makes her qualified to have involvement in a big company like CNET? No, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's a good question. And I'm assuming you're not the only one who was asking me that. So in that, was, uh, in that way, uh, it's, uh, I've worked with my daughter together in my industrial business. I'm working with your children in 101. And for sure, when your, one of your children is a copy-paste of yourself, yeah. It's a challenge. It's not easy. It's not an easy job. But she, she built her track record. So from a commercial internal service to commercial external service to uh, operational management. So she's built already a track, a track record. That's one thing. So I think she is now up for a next challenge. And I don't know if she will succeed in the challenge. That is what we see. But I want to offer her the opportunity. So that's one thing. So there is already a background. It's not that she's coming from zero to become the hero. No, no, she gets the chance now in her next career move to step up and uh, let me say, to get to know the family business overall as an investment portfolio. That's one thing. The second thing is that, uh, and I mentioned already, my daughter, when you would see her, you would immediately say the same passion, the same energy. She is very energetic. She is very energetic. She is very passionate. So she has also the same enthusiasm to bring something over. She is very good in being together with people and bringing something over, what I think is basic yeah, in what we are doing. And the third thing is she grew up on boats. She grew up on boats. She grew up on yachts. She is very passionate about the sea. And all our family memories 
uh, are built around boats, about around yachts. The only thing where she will have to uh, to learn to get to know more is more the technical part. She's never be really been involved in the technical part, and that's something specifically that's linked to me. I like te technical part of the of boating, so that, that's a big advantage that she will have to learn a little bit. But I don't want to make her uh, or to turn her into a, an engineer. That's not needed. But that's but let us see. I will. When you ask me the question in three to five years, I can give you an answer. Yes. Maybe it will not work. We will see. But let me say, at least I want to try it. Yes, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Now, with all the growth, the, the addition of your, your daughter into the company, more yachts, how, what's the organization look like going forward? The organization will look like, okay, I know that you have a, a, a discussion planned or an interview planned also with Liam, so I don't want to wipe out everything that he's going to tell. But for me, it's very simple. Uh, Leon will take the CEO ship. He will run the organization. Below, below, below Leon, there are two main figures. Yeah, one from the operational side, that is Tomo. He's the operations manager. And there are some new developments where we will uh, give him right and left hands in capacity. Yeah, Johnny will be the one of them, but there is other stuff. And Ellie will further focus on the experience part of it. And we will also uh, strengthen up our financial organization. Yeah. Maybe I can tell something about that. And our operational organization from an administration point of view, from a recruitment point of view. And when I speak about the financial um, um, uh, part, so when you look now, you have, I don't know if you ever met Cedric, but Cedric is our financial wizard. He is uh, he's located in the main office. So in the meantime, when you we handled, we handled one yard, we handled five yards, we are now handling eight plus one yard in built. I don't have to tell you that uh, millions are flowing through the organization. Yeah, we have a very detailed reporting on every topic on the boat, from um, from crew salaries uh, to harbor costs to winterization costs to all the maintenance costs, and we are now more and more into. We have a lot of data, but data is only valuable when you do the analysis and you do the data mining. Yeah, when you turn in data to opportunities to optimize. So what we now are going to do is simply to enlarge the organization that we can do more with the data that we have. We know exactly, based on running hours, um, the, the machinery cost. Yeah, Engines, uh, water makers, all the systems on board, uh, the generators, and we see there are differences. Why there are differences? Um, uh, and all of are maintained in the same way. So we want to use that more to optimize the running cost. So also from a financial point of view, we want to do more with the data that we, have, that we own. That's great. And I think that's probably a very good segue for us to talk to Leon and Tommy's lab. Yep which we're going to do up in the Sky Lounge. Yeah, and one thing what is very important, what I wanted to say as maybe as a closure, as a closing point, it started as a one-man band. Yes. I was the guy uh, who was, had an, a weird idea of putting a yacht up for co-ownership. Yeah? Uh, what I want to make very clear at this moment, it's not a one-man band anymore. There's a professional organization behind it, and that's also the reason that from an operational point of view, I really want to step back to give those people the chance to position themselves within Cena, but also towards all our customer, customers today, but also potential customers in the future. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons that I too am keen to interview them, because I think it's important that the viewers, I mean, by now we've done, I think, four or five videos with CNET. Yep. And it's good for viewers to, to get to know you, but it's also good for them to get to know um, Leon and Tommy's lab as well. Yeah, for sure, people who look into a co-ownership proposal uh, it has a lot to do with trust. Yes. <clears throat> the big difference between buying a yacht is buying a yacht, the, the end of the process is you do have the delivery of the yacht. Yes. Yeah? And then there is still contact between the one who has sold the yacht and the owner, but mainly they go their separate ways. So for us, then the journey starts. So getting to know your part and getting to know CNET and everything behind the scenes, how it works, is in a co-ownership, super crucial. Selling a share is only a fraction of what we do. The main, main important thing is managing the experience of our owners and managing the yachts and the crew of, of the owner's boats. And that's a very crucial thing. And you have to understand, before you sign a check for multi-millions in a share, you need to know with whom I'm working together, who is the partner behind it. Thanks, Matty. My pleasure. As always, it's a lot of fun, very interesting. Okay, thank you very much. So I've been talking to Matty, as you know, about how the company's growing, but I was struck as well at how quickly it's growing. And when things happen quickly, that puts a lot of weight 
on your shoulders. I'd like to start with you first, Leon. Can you tell me how you're coping with that, what your role is, and, and what changes you're making? No, it's, it's a valid point. And uh, I think in the previous uh, meeting, we explained that our aim was to have 10 yachts in the fleet by the end of 2024. Um, and at the moment, we're already at number eight plus nine coming. So it is going even quicker than we anticipated and that we, uh, than that we uh, thought it would be. And uh, in order to deal with that, we do need to make some changes in the organization uh, because, you know, we need to keep up with the demand. We need to provide the service and the level of quality that uh, the owners correctly expect from us. Uh, and we need to build that team and expand that team in order to support those activities. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be some changes. Um, uh, we also made some changes in the commercial uh, department. So Raf, who has been with CNET since the beginning with Maddie, uh, has left our organization since uh, as per the end of January uh, and we welcomed um, Alexander Rodriguez as the new sales guy that is going to be responsible for sales business development. So that's that's a part of the, uh, the change. Um, and then we also welcomed back Johnny and I know you remember Johnny. I remember him well. Uh, he he's, he used to be our operations manager from the beginning. Um, and he is now back and he in the meantime he is a certified uh, Lloyds surveyor uh, and Thomas Love can explain a little bit more about what that means in the cooperation with, uh, with, with Tomo but in short um, we started with one operations manager we then split the task between more the technical navigational side with Thomas Love coming on board and Ellie as the hospitality manager and now we make another split in the operations uh, side of the business where Johnny is going to come for more special projects uh, that, that Thomas Love is going to explain more. So um, it is really about keeping up with that growth and make sure that we are ready for the next step because uh, we want to we want to grow that we, there's no secret, but we want to control the growth and we want to make sure that we deliver. What needs so to be for, for the benefit of the viewers, um, can you kind of draw me a little uh, imaginary organizational chart? You, you're the CEO now correct, of the company, correct, so you're yeah. the CEO. Yeah. So that means all the day-to-day -day, uh, operation, including sales and marketing, finance, back office, uh, operations, hospitality management. So really making sure that we deliver the service and, and, and manage the yacht and the fleet and the crew. Uh, to the level that it uh, that it uh, needs to be managed. Uh, so, so Matty, what's Matty's role? Matty now uh, is becoming the chairman uh, of the company as well as the brand ambassador. We all know Matty's passion for uh, the yachting industry, but also for CNET. Yeah. He started on his own with one yacht and brought it to where we are now. And uh, Matty has been and will be instrumental in that whole uh, brand ambassadorship, making sure that he represents still the face of the company and Maddie and I will work very closely together uh, on strategy and, and portfolio and, and adding new concepts to the to the uh, to the company. But uh, yeah, as far as the day to day operation is concerned, he has asked me to take that on and, and manage that with the rest of the team. And then the other two people I always meet, Tom and Ellie. Can you remind me there the division of roles? Yeah, yeah. so Thomas Love is, is uh, responsible for the operational side of the business when it comes down to the uh, the captains, the engineers, the uh, the deckhands, so more the technical side of the fleet and then Ellie is in charge of all the hospitality. So that means preference list, itineraries, flight, concierge service uh, and also the stew and the chief stew positions and the chef positions. So we try to really make a separation between the more technical navigational side of the business as well as the hospitality and the experience side of the business. And I have to say about Ellie, for the benefit of the viewers, that even though she's got an important role in the company, she's a manage, in the management of the company, mm. we got to the yacht uh, yesterday and she'd got a duster in her oh. hand and she was polishing and she was karate chopping the cushions. So she's really hands-on, isn't she, the way I, that she works? I, I must say, I'm very lucky with the team. I mean, we have a, a very skilled, highly motivated team that, that is there day and night whenever you need them. And yeah, no one, no one is too good to, end, to do any job and, and if it needs we will wash down the boats if, if, if that is required or we will just do the interior. Yeah, no, it, we're very lucky with, uh, with the team. Well, it seems to be the CNET culture oh, yeah, to sort absolutely. of roll your sleeves up yeah. and get in and, and get things done. I, I think if not, we would not have grown uh, the way we are and uh, we would not have the future that we, uh, that we see. So. And, and Tom, with your role, because you're very similar, you, you, you're management, but I've seen that you really get stuck into the nitty gritty, hands-on 
work as well. How are you coping with this rapid growth? Yeah, um, sometimes I wonder myself, uh, how do we all cope? But we, we're doing a great job. I'm really, really happy. Proud to be a uh, part of seeing a team for quite some time now. Um, yes, it is with a, with a growing, growing fleet. It's becoming more and more challenging, more difficult. But all in all, we're doing we're doing very well, and we uh, recognized in time what do we need to do, how we need to strengthen our team to cope with the growth, but to maintain CNA standards, which is a crucial for us. Um, and that's as um, Leon said. That's why Johnny joined us on that on those on the technical slash maintenance slash safety side of things. So Gianni will be covering um, uh, twice a year we have a uh, shipyard periods where we where we uh, maintain boats depending which boat goes out in the spring which one goes out in the fall. Um, he will be then concentrating that those are well prepared and executed in time. We don't have too much time to do those things and he's fantastic with those type of things. Uh, he's doing surveys for us whenever we have some new project. Um, yeah, just to give the, the viewers an idea with regard to the surveys, typically what kind of surveys would Jani be, be doing? Correct. Uh, we will often get a client that would like to purchase some yacht and um, then he would like us also to have a look at the boat and tell him is that boat worth that money, is it a good buy or not and Johnny then performs those surveys, uh, is fantastic in those type of things, very very um, thorough and, and uh, really high, high spec uh, surveys. In the meantime he, he finishes Lloyd's uh, Super Yacht Surveyor um, course, became certified Lloyd's uh, Surveyor. Um, so on top of his long career and his great experience, he added some more uh, knowledge and value. So his surveys are like really, really yeah. spot on. And, th and that's a really important thing that, important. that I want to make the point that to have a, a certified mm -hmm. Lloyd surveyor on the team is is not a small thing. That's a massive asset that you have. Correct. Currently, for example, we have a 27 meter uh, Azimut Grande, which uh, was joined to the fleet, um, which was surveyed by, by Gianni. Uh, when owner came back to us and he decided to buy a boat, he came back to us with a list of um, a list of upgrades he would like to do. We immediately knew what, where, how, what are the issues, and uh, and the team that's working on that boat has been uh, doing great job in rectifying all those issues and doing upgrades as well. So it really helps that we are a strong team in house. And do you get very involved with the new construction? Uh, project that Matty was telling me about, um, or is that more Jani? It's, or... more, it's more Jani. It's still more on on um, Matty, Leon, Jani level. It will get to me as well as we get closer to placement of the crew, equipping of the boat, all these other things. But at the moment, it's still more on their level. I've been, I've seen it. It's impressive, but uh, I've been to I've been to the shipyard, but um, yeah, I'm not as involved yet. Okay, so your your role will become more involved as it gets closer to delivery. And... Correct. Correct. So, so basically, we're going to add another person uh, to our uh, new office that we're going to have actually in uh, Marina Love, which is part of Le Meridian uh, Love uh, Five Star Hotel in Split. Fantastic. Oh, you're going to have an office there. Yeah. Right. Yes, yeah, very excited about that. Very excited about the office that we're going to open there. Uh, it's in a lovely uh, marina that um, currently holds the boats up to 35 meters, but they're doing an extension, so they will have a couple of berths for up to 50 meters. Um, fantastic setup. We're going to add another member to the team, a person that's going to help us in more in an HR or basic HR um, work and administ administrative role. Um, that will then allow, with Johnny helping on technical side of things, it will allow me to concentrate more on high level HR and also um, maintaining CNET standards across the fleet. Because what's happening is we employ people that are coming from a different backgrounds. So not all of them have the same standards. And what we're really working hard on is standardizing that so that everyone is on the same level and that no matter what scene at yacht you come on, a uh, level of service is the same, the quality, the kindness of people and all of that. So we he, really he told me a story downstairs. We were having like a, an informal chat downstairs. He told me about one stewardess that lasted, what, three hours was it? <laughs> she did, she did, she did. She was on my boat, actually. The boat I was captain of. We just got a whole new crew on board and uh, one stewardess walked around with Ellie and realized uh, what's the level that we expect yeah. here. Uh, she, it, was, it was lunchtime, she said she's resigning. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was it. I think she expected more of a, a fancier uh, role um, with, uh, you know, time for social media and that which, which we don't really have in, in, in here. So people watching who, who 
would like to work with CNET, I guess the message is it's a fantastic company, but you've got to be prepared to, to work hard and give absolutely, high standards. Absolutely, there are very high standards. And, uh, you know, there's, we, we now have 65 crew, so it's, it's becoming a, a serious team. And, uh, but again, the, the good thing here is that we have a very loyal team. Uh, the people are working very hard, but again, most of the yachts are on a rotational uh, scheme. So the people are two months on, two months off, which enables them to spend also time with their family uh, instead of being away the whole season. Um, uh, so yeah, they work very hard, but it talks around. So what we see now is that people are also approaching us and say, hey, hearing some good things about CNET and, and is there a vacancy, is there an opening? And, uh, but yeah, there's no question about it that uh, we are not here to have a holiday. We are here to, 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 to run a, a business and, and to make sure that the owners and the guests are having an excellent experience and that means hard work, period. I mean, there's, there's no question about that. We're not going on holiday. Yeah. And, and a very cool thing about CNET is our aim is to get really good, hardworking people on board. Uh, that are prepared to work hard, but then if they succeed in that and if they succeed in what they're doing, there is a great opportunity to grow. And there are numerous examples of people growing within our company. We actually kept an Ovorius uh, being with us for nine years, starting yeah. as, a, as a, a deckhand on Mr. Z and growing all the way to the captain of Mr. Z, captain of Uni and now captain of Orius. He is the best example, but there are many others as well myself too, uh, of people who grew with the company and, and that's fantastic and those are people who share our DNA and we don't need to spend much time with those type of people to yeah. bring them to see, they're already on scene. I, I guess you know pretty quickly if people yeah. are going to work yeah. out or, or not and, and it seems to me that a part of the career growth as well is that you, you're growing in number, mm -hmm. you're growing in speed but also you're growing in the size of yachts mm -hmm. so for captains and crew who want to move on to bigger yachts it's, Correct. it's looking Correct. good. So the, the aim is, for example, a, a person starts as a deckhand. He's capable, or a girl starts as a second stew. <clears throat> Same thing. But the, let's say about guys, he's capable of growing slowly to become a chief officer. He becomes chief of chief officer on 35 meters. Now we have ability to put him as a captain on 27 or 30. Um, to, to, so he has a bit of a slower start, not immediately on a 35 or 40 meters where there is 7, 8 crew and it's a lot more complex. Uh, and that way we really have nice structure and gives us a lot of possibilities. We often do, you know, these puzzles with crew who goes where, what, how, how to also help them grow and, and uh, remain having the CNET standard that we want to, to have on all our yachts. So we were talking yesterday uh, a lot about the growth and, and honestly it's not difficult to see why the company's growing. The idea is, is fantastic and it makes total sense. Where do you see the company being in the next, say, one to five years? Well, it's, it's a good question and we often have internal uh, conversations about that topic too. And I think the way I look at it is that the growth needs to be there. We need to build the business even further and, and, and add more yachts to the fleet. But we need to be able to follow that as an organization. So, so my role is really trying to get that organization balanced uh, at the right moment, invest the resources at the right location with the right discipline and then make sure that we support that growth. Uh, so yes, we are, we are there to grow and we, we definitely will grow, but it will be a controlled grow and it will be a, a growth where uh, the organization is capable to deal it. Because if you invest that sort of money as an owner, as a co-owner, you expect that level of service and, and you don't care whether the company is growing fast or slow, you want your service to be delivered. So that's where, where we come in. And uh, we still have a lot of growth that we can do in this part of the world. Uh, and I'm sure that, and we all know Maddie, uh, that uh, there are also aspirations uh, to go beyond that. But uh, let's, I'm more there to say, let's get the organization there, make sure that the structure is in place, that we can follow that growth and that we are prepared to, to back that up. And that's, that's where I see the future. But yeah, there's, there's no doubt about the fact that we have aspirations and that we are there to, uh, to, to grow the business, yeah. definitely. Well, thank you both very much for You're your time. Welcome. It was great to see you again. Thanks, David.